Uh, hi and welcome to this Factorio mini tutorial. I'm Captain Concept and today I'm gonna show you how to do rail signaling the easy way. Now rail signaling isn't the big thing, some people tend to struggle, some people tend to overcomplicate things, but it's really simple if you follow this set of rules. So whenever a train drives towards a junction, place a chain signal, whenever a train leaves a junction, place a rail signal. That's it in a nutshell, of course there is some variation, but let's have a look at it. So let's grab the rail chain signal. We got our train station here, so he drives towards a junction, here's a junction. That means you're gonna place down a chain signal. Now let's have a look at the other side. Uh, if a train comes from this direction, here he drives towards a junction, so we're going to place down a, ra a rail chain signal here. Um, for clarity's sake, I tend to place them next to the rail signals, and that's going to be here, so I'm going to place this chain signal out here. And from the other side, train comes from this side, drives towards a junction, that means a chain signal here. So that's already halfway done. Now we need to place the rail signals. Rail signals we place whenever a train leaves the junction. So here or from here the train leaves the junction. That means a rail signal here. And they now built a so-called block. So the train now is in this block. Same here. If he would leave this junction, place a rail signal here and if he leaves this block that means we place a rail signal here and that's it that's all that we needed to do for this it's done now and the train network would work now there's one thing that you can optimize here if we hop into our train and if we drive up here you see as soon as the train is here all of this section is blocked, which is actually a good thing because we don't want any trains coming from this or that direction smashing into this train. Like this one, he now stopped. But let's say we are here and we're driving out this way. That means that this track would be free and another train could drive by. And also like if, if you imagine this train driving through this section, he will also lock down this section down here because it's connected through those tracks. It doesn't really matter that those tracks don't go this way, it's just whenever rails cross. Like, think of it like electricity. So one way to optimize this is by separating those two tracks and we do that the same way. So train enters a junction here, that means chain signal here. and train leaves the junction here that means a rail signal here and now you see this one turned green so this track is now free for trains to pass and as soon as I leave this section here with my train when I'm here already this train can move on so that increased the throughput here's the other train that has been waiting down here presumably that now has uh, had the clearance to pass by. So it's really simple, you know, think of the tracks as blocks. So this, that, that, and that means this is one block that is now separated from this block down here. And now you see with this rule, um, there we have a chain signal and here we have a chain signal. That means if we have a train on this track, this one is red. That means also this one is red and the train will stop here instead of driving all the way here and stopping there and blocking this track. Now, if things get a bit more complicated, like here, I'm standing at the roundabout and this roundabout has additional connections, there is an addition to that rule that applies and that is if the end of a junction is in front of another junction, place another chain signal instead of a rail signal. So let's have a look here, the, um, these two entries apply to the regular rule, train enters, chain signal, train leaves, rail signal, same here, however if we look at these two 
um, junctions here, the train would leave the roundabout, right? So there, that would be a rail signal. But because this is just in front of another junction, we place a chain signal instead. And then after that, after the last junction, here we have the rail signal. The reason for that is that a train that leaves this roundabout wouldn't wouldn't uh, drive all the way to here to stop at uh, at the rail signal that we would place here because then he would still block this roundabout like this let's say uh, that train has to go over there right if any of this is still blocked he will wait out there instead of driving all the way here effectively leaving the roundabout free for trains to pass from this direction for example also you notice these chain signals within the roundabout and what just happened is as soon as I as my train drove past this chain signal this track was effectively free for this train to to pass through so within the roundabout it's the same this is the end of a junction was also the beginning of the next junction therefore we place a chain signal because this applies for all these sections within the roundabout if we dissect this roundabout with chain signals we increase the throughput of this roundabout making it way better than most other junctions also notice a little detail here if we think in blocks again because this is one block if I wouldn't have this chain signal here this one would be useless that's why it's blinking right now because this block here is still connected through this track also a little detail down here as you can see like the input of this junction has a chain signal here we don't have one because we placed it down here at the station that means if a train arrives as long as this roundabout is blocked he will wait here at the station again you could place a chain signal here if this is this uh, section is longer than your train is like if i have a two wagon train this one would be valid and then instead of a chain signal i would actually place a rail signal here like uh, so that means if this train here leaves he would drive all the way down here and wait here making space for another train in this section however if this is longer like if i had three or four wagon then again a train waiting here would still block this station and then it would be better to just place a, ra a chain signal here and this one can just be removed so I hope this little explanation made sense and that you have a better time placing signals. It's really easy. Think of flows, ingoing chain, outgoing, or like whenever you want to free the track, place a rail signal. Think in blocks. Check if, if all the tracks are separated like the, if the block is separated from the next block and a little extra tip if you have long sections of rail place some rail signals in between to cut this into other blocks or sections because if you have a train on this track he would effectively block all of this until he reaches this roundabout and like this as soon as he's passed this signal, the next train could go in there, effectively increasing the flow. So that's it. If you have any suggestions or questions or wishes for another tutorial, let me know in the comment section. If you like this mini tutorial, let me know by leaving a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And make sure that whatever you do, that you always have a hands with of water on your keel. I'm Captain Concept and I wish you a fabulous day.